I tried to ask him to cross it, but he was being, uh, he was being evasive across it. He's going to come in next week and say, I was trying to be as fair as possible, but I was trying to pour him down and, and trying to pour him down and trying to ask him what he was actually meaning by that analysis, which was not actually there. But so at that point, I was actually saying that you can turn this analysis, if, you, if you're going to be evaluating the theory in terms of dropping the debate argument, this is going to be, you can turn the, uh, you can, I'm going to be outlining in terms of the time two argument that makes on the, uh, that makes on the RBI analysis. This is going to be skewing my process time, making it so far as I'm going to have to ask him an infinite amount of questions in process in order to guard him down to his into a theory, to, 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 to guard him down into a coherent strategy. So at this point, I'm going to be, uh, this is going to be actually outlining on the time three, in, in cross X uh, times Q analysis, uh, in cross X times Q, which is going to actually outweigh, uh, preclude all of the theory standards because the, our ability to create a coherent strategy is conditioned on our ability to understand where our opponent is running in cross X, and then which inherently dictates our, our strategy, which is a, which is integral to our ability to execute arguments and then I'll make arguments within the round. So at this point, this means, this means I'm actually going to be outweighing the time two analysis, in which he says, in which he says we, we should be weighing, uh, weighing blah, 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 else. Then you go to the second argument about like the double jeopardy argument, which I said that I can put them in the Jewish system too, or like uh, he doesn't, yeah, he's not inhibiting me from running this counter plan, I could do it. But my, uh, my argument was saying that. Um, either A, I run the show, or B, I, 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 I'm putting them in the Jewish system. I was spiking out his argument saying that I, that violates double jeopardy. So, it would be, if he's saying I'm allowed to be putting them in the, in the, in the if I'm allowed to transfer the Jewish system, then I can transfer them into the Jewish system, and thus I solve for all the AC problems. That is a sufficient to vote neck right there, because I will be solving for the AC by putting them in, by transferring them back into the Jewish system, and thus giving them the, uh, the, uh, thus doing, thus showing us the why they should be treated in that, in that regard, because that, that, that which takes out the, the, uh, the Bay analysis, or the, the uh, way he tries to, um, say the Bay analysis actually means. So, at that point, theory is not a reason to vote for me. I'm not telling you to vote for me on theory. I'm just explaining to you as to why Adler mistake my argument for a drop the debate argument that's trying to run an RBI. If he wins the counter trip, that does not win him the round, and if he wins off of uh, like defense against my shell, that does not win me the round. But, but that does not win him the round. So, go to the NC. You, his only argument against the NC is, is, is that the uh, is that, that, that the U.S. wants to do it in the bid analysis. But remember, if I explain to you as to why the bid analysis is not a reason as to why you're going to be affirming, he dropped the reason as to why the negative case is going to be precluding the affirmative case. So if I win the NC saying that's why the NC precludes the AC and it functions as a reason, and, and then if, if I explain the burden analysis saying if, you, if, uh, if Adler does not disprove moralism, then that means you negate immediately. Then that means you're going to be negating off the NC because that's going to be precluding all else. So go to the NC specifically. Is there any analysis right? So in order for the enemies to hold the maximum, then the U.S. juveniles hold the bottom line. These obviously results. Therefore, by proof, the moral, if I, if I prove that we ought not to do them in the same, then that negates that it's a from a moral maximum. Are you going to my analysis argument predictably, which uses a predictable definition of of, but negating means to nullify or deny the truth of, which is that which is inherent to or inherent to our fairness, which is our ability to prepare for strategies to digital bond, but predictable analysis. So in order that you should be proper strategy, you can the analysis of the risk analysis of justice. I can tell you, I can tell when determining what is just, you must observe that the perspective of moral realism for the justice only the expression of the dominant group, the claim the dominant claim of society. The use of the risk analysis like the political changes, moral language, we run more from any moral beliefs. That means we run the words of violence unless we can close, unless from claims about the proper application of terms like just and good can be grounded in the transcendent reality of the good and just that the response is what has proven is argued that we are politically believed just and good just enjoy any objectively, uh, objectively uh, effective free as existing from the outside of the human mind or apart from human will that analysis is going to become uh, very important when I extend across the burden analysis go to there now right below that it's the right that the justice and suffer for proof of and morality. The affirmative must accept the view of moral realism that the meaning of justice becomes absolutely new conduct of members of society where the strongest wins out. The, this is where Adler loses the round. The affirmative must disprove moral realism, else you can negate immediately because the U.S. is the sole international suffer for superpower. Even if the U.S. is not two jewels who commit violent values as, uh, as adults, in some cases, that, but if in some cases they do, that still means you are going to be negating. Because if in some cases they are treated as adults and in some they are not, then that still has the moral maximum because juveniles are not treated the same and that's kind of, they're not, that's not categorically. So the way this breaks down is that if I send across the hedge and argue I win the round off the antics of frequency AC, I'm just going to be back in the mid analysis in a second. Ben, 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 sorry. Then about the second argument, the U.S. had music possessed the most nuclear weapons in the world, as best nuclear defenses, and is successful in successful international arenas. This is the United States is dictating what we ought to do. In so far as the U.S. policies are not grounded in these, uh, the U.S. policy in this task is not grounded, saying that we should uh, that, that we have the death penalty for juveniles. That inherently means it's not what we ought to do. So this is going to take out the analysis. He, remember, he tries to tell you the analysis is that like. Uh, the bid analysis would preclude my or my analysts because it comes from the chief justice of the Supreme Court and because we should be looking what they what they want to do, what they intend to do, not what they actually do. But, but however, uh, uh, Adler and Cross specifically asked me, are you saying that the way that the United States functions or the policy they intend to implement or the policy they do implement? I told you the way the status quo functions in the United States, any status quo does X, that means X is moral. At that point, the bid analysis goes away because bid is saying what we, what we want to do, but not necessarily what we do do. At that point, it might be morally, it doesn't necessarily matter because in any status quo, what we ought to do is we ought to negate. That's what the NC analysis is saying. He completely mishandled the NC and the NC precludes all else. So at that point, the round is over on the negative case. It doesn't matter if it's extending all the stuff out of the AC or even about the theory of it. None of that matters. But even if you don't buy that, let's go back to theory in a second. For a second. Just in case you think that winning the RBI is like sufficient and like the counter turf stuff, that doesn't matter. Remember, holding to the exact rhetoric of his counter turf vision and, and allowing you to shift out of the exact rhetoric of his counter turf vision would be severely harmful really strategy. Strategy, strategy, strategly similar to the arguments I'm making this piece would not necessarily matter the next piece, which is if it has to be linked to Paris' liability to make arguments are no longer uh, being evaluated. So, holding to the exact rhetoric of his analysis, his exact rhetoric of the counter turf vision was saying that I don't have to accept, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have to accept arguments in CX, or sorry, I, I'm sorry, I don't have to accept arguments in CX unless, uh, unless, it's asked, unless it's asked of me. His specific analysis, his specific, uh, 
counterinformation was not actually answering my argument. He's just simply saying that I should be able to ask questions cross sex He does not actually uh, make the argument that, uh, theory, that that theory or team violations must be asking asking cross sex. He simply said that I uh, that uh, that uh, it, that I can I can concede to things. He didn't say that I have to be uh, that the opposing committer has to ask me team or theory violations. That argument was never there in the counterinformation. So at that point, there's no reason as to, uh, as to why the other arguments matter. He's trying to say that I'm going to be harboring a background uh, ground quality or, or quality quantitatively. That does not matter because my argument is that the, 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 uh, on the, on the outweighing on the time scale is going to be outweighing. Remember, if you're evaluating theory for theory for whatever reason, I'm out Lang on time skew, but remember you're evaluating the negative case before else because the negative C, the NC precludes the AC. And he's cold conceding that analysis and it doesn't make sense because he mishandles the identity process. Cool. Why not kid? What standards do you extend to the theory shell? Uh, I didn't go for national. I didn't extend specifically the tech standard. <coughs> okay, so you didn't extend the standard. No. Oh, I think time skew. Time skew. Okay. I said I outweigh on time skew. I didn't. My question. My argument is like I outweigh. I didn't explicitly extend what the you time skew. So you say I outweigh on an impact that I don't extend a link to. Sure. You said time skew outweighs stuff, but I don't show why the affirmative skews time. That's your argument. Wait, what? My question is, what did you extend out of the theory shell that shows that I violate a standard? My argument is saying that I outweigh on the time skew level. You can say that the, the, you, my you, I get on how do I violate right. the time skew? Okay. That is where the argument of the RBI or competing interps come into play, right? If you're saying that you're trying to yeah, maximize our interpretation of the with an RBI or competing interp, my question is, out of your shell, I did not extend any standard out of my specific shell. Not extend but I would still say that if Wax is going to vote on theory, you vote neg off of the times you argument. <coughs> okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, Anything else? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be theory for three minutes. Maybe less. We probably don't need to talk about Okay. You ready? I know it sucks to vote off exchanges that happen in cross-examination and short words in the speech, but he is just wrong when he says that he read fairness as a reason to reject the argument. This is damning for him because he can see that, uh, that theory isn't RBI if he reads this bar. You can extend the show where I say that, uh, that debaters may not run a theory show and lose it to an offensive counterinterpretation that I mean that proceeds to win the rap. He can see the standards of time skew. I'm giving you flesh out analysis about why I in a double bind when he reads theory because I either have to spend a lot of time on theory in which he can kick out of theory and not even go for it and go for a case like he does in this round, or I overcommit on, or, or I overcommit on case and I lose on theory. Just because he didn't do that in this round doesn't prove that he wouldn't have. Further, he doesn't have any offense on the RBI. He's banking everything on winning this argument that fairness is not a voter. Wax. There are two problems. The first is, he definitely said the words, fairness is a voter, in the first speech. We have a video camera. If you need to go to the video camera, that's fine, but he specifically said them. I remember thinking, why is he reading this as a voter? I haven't done anything unfair. He specifically said it. The second, even if he didn't say that fairness is a voter, here's the shell. I asked him very specifically in cross-examination, mark for me anything you did not read. Look at this. What? He crossed out the bottom part. This is where the misunderstanding is coming. He absolutely read this first paragraph, which says, fairness is a voting issue because debate uses an adversarial system to adjudicate rounds, which is skewed when one side is abandoned. Subsequent decisions are rendered meaningless by unfair frameworks since they reflect the advantages instead of the debating. Fairness comes before any post-standards level arguments since it frames the debate, and we need a common ground before we can possibly evaluate any arguments. The argument he crossed out is an additional justification for why fairness is a voter. That doesn't mean that he never read one. It just means that he read one justification for fairness as a voter, not two. I can see that fairness is a voter. I implicitly extend this in my RBI shell. I'm extending this right now. I say fairness comes before everything else in the round, and he can see the RBI. At this point, all I need to do to win the round is win an I meet on a shell or offense on my counterinterpretation. You can extend my counterinterpretation. He doesn't have any offense off his interpretation, he concedes. He doesn't extend any. So that means any risk of offense for my counterinterpretation is sufficient to vote off the RBI. He says to hold me to the rhetoric. I say that I, can, that I should be able to, that I can clarify, not that I have to be allowed to clarify. That is what it means. My argument is I should be able to be able to clarify like this. And when he denies me the ability to clarify by running theory, I would solve that for all of his offense because I wouldn't do the unfair thing he accuses me of, which means there would be no unique offense to his theory shell. But it has a net benefit coming out of the affirmative framework for bad neg time scale and why it's bad for neg people to read theory and topicality every time. I know you think that's an awful norm for debate. We've talked about it. It's explicit in your paradigm. My argument is it's bad for him to be able to do this. He should at least have to ask me a cross-examination question. And even if you think that there were compelling arguments made, he concedes that he doesn't go for any standard, so it's just any risk of offense here. But either way, you can also extend the offense on my counterinterpretation that I would solve for this even better, because I would clarify, he says that you can vote for him off time skew. That's just false. 
I'm the one going for theory for almost four minutes of the money or three minutes here. He's able to go for his. There's no link story for why his time is skewed or why this going to compare to mine. Either way, mine came first. His time is only skewed because he chose to run theory, but I was forced into it. That's worse. Correct. Take my option. Yeah, absolutely.